I want to talk about how transformation into Christ may actually be a process. See, it's possible that the things that we are used to doing, it may take time to actually stop doing those things. It may be a certain belief that we had that it may take time for us to get out of us. And so transforming to something new, it actually may not happen overnight. So if we are used to indulging in a certain thing or, or our flesh may have indulged in a certain thing that whenever we come to the point of trying to change it, we may find ourselves wanting to resort back to what we used to. See, in the book of Galatians, Paul was dealing with the Galatians who, who um, obviously, when you read chapter three, they had this uh, deal where they was under the law and, and, and they was used to being under the law. So when Paul came teaching them that you are no longer under the law because Christ came to redeem you from the law and he tried to teach them that they was now should be under God, you know, that they should live to by the faith of the son of God. But see, it seems that they had trouble with that. So they were so used to being under the law to when Paul came and introduced something new, it was difficult for them to leave that one belief that they always had to cross over into being into something else. Now, in the book of Galatians chapter four, verse 19, Paul says this. He says, my little children of whom I travail or whom I work in birth again until Christ be formed in you. See, Paul was talking about working in them again until Christ be formed in them. Because, like, you know, and to really grasp what Paul is saying, if you go back and read um, Galatians chapter 3 through chapter 4, you will see how Paul was trying to teach them and try to get them to understand that it's no longer about the law anymore. Now you should be under Christ Jesus. And Paul did the same thing with the Romans. So, so Paul talks about here, he says that he travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Cause he was trying to get them to transform into now being under Christ. Well, Christ was in them or Christ was living in them and they was living in Christ. Let's look at Galatians chapter five. I want to read verse 13 through 16. Paul says, for brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so Paul is saying here is that he's trying to get them to understand that you've been called to liberty because being under the law is bondage. But God has called you to liberty. But don't use liberty as an occasion to the flesh. He said, but just but love one another. All right. He says, so instead of you being under all this law, he says, well, all the law is fulfilled in one word. He says, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So if you learn how to love your neighbor as yourself, you will learn that you will fulfill all the law by doing, by loving your neighbor as you love yourself. So he talks about how they would bite and devour each other. So he's talking about the way they would treat, you know, other people. If they do that, then they're going to be consumed of one another. But he says, but walk in the spirit. So he says, so understand when you walk in the spirit, this is a continuation of something that you must do. You must, he says, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So we going to, you may have, so in other words, your flesh, it may have a lust. It's going to have a lust in it, but you have to position yourself to walk in the spirit. We have to position ourselves to walk in the spirit. And if we position ourselves to walk in the spirit, then we won't fulfill this continuous lust that we have that's in our flesh. Let's look at Romans chapter 12. The book of Romans chapter 12. Uh, 
Paul says to the Romans here, he says, I beseech you at verse one, I beseech you or I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So he's telling them to present their bodies. Now, remember, he's talking to the Romans. He's talking to now these are believers, but he's telling them how he urged them to present their bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. So he, he's urging them to walk in this manner. And it's in the manner of sacrifice, being a living sacrifice to God. He says, which is your reasonable service? And he says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So he's trying to tell them how they should not be conformed to this world because this world is not conformed to Christ. But he says, but be transformed. So they wasn't all already transformed. That's why he's telling them to be ye transformed. So transform yourself, he says, by the renewing of your mind. So he's trying to teach them that you need to renew your mind so that you are transformed, so that you are not like the world, and so that you will do those things that is good, acceptable, and, and what is the perfect will of God in your life. So you will be able to do that by transforming your mind. All right. Let's look at Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Romans 8, 29, Paul says this. He says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So he's talking about God. And how God has, because he, he foreknew us even before the foundation of the world. And by God knowing us already before he even created us, he predestinated us to be conformed into the image of his son. So when we are conformed, we are basically transformed into the image of his son. So in order for us to be conformed to the image of his son, we must was not conform. We must been one way um, before the transformation. But God want us to be conformed to the image of his son. That's because he know that we're not in the image of his son, but he want us to be conformed or transformed into the image of his son. Just like he says, to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So just like a transformer, a transformer can go from a car to a, a robot man or whatever you want to call it. That's because you are one way, but you could be transformed into another way. And so we have to be transformed into Christ because a lot of us may have been in sin all of our life. We may have been in a certain belief all of our lives, but God want us to be transformed so that we become into the image of his son in which we know that his son jesus christ he was holy all right he loved righteousness and hated iniquity so god want us to start loving righteousness and hating iniquity when we could have been loving unrighteousness and hating um hating what's righteous all our lives many of us didn't want to do right we didn't want to live this holy life. So we love the things of the world, but God want us to be transformed. So we may, our bodies and flesh may be used to being uh, in the world, but we have to transform, allow ourselves to be transformed by the word of God. We have to allow the word of God to wash us. The Bible says that we are washed by the, um, by the water of the word. So we have to, whenever you wash yourself, that's something that's like, you don't, you're not just washed and that's it. You think about when you take a bath, you steady scrubbing. You're scrubbing yourself. You're scrubbing yourself down. You're not just rinsing water. You're scrubbing yourself. You're trying to get all the dirt off. So it takes a little bit of time to get that dirt off your body. It may take a few minutes by scrubbing yourself, but because you're washing yourself. All right. 
So we got to do some work. We got to scrub ourselves. And, and, you know, in our mind, we really got to renew this mind. I know we all, I have to renew my mind. I'm not, you know, we all have to renew our minds. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. This is why he gave these offices. He says, for the perfecting of the saints. So he gave these offices so that these people can help perfect us. He says, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come into the unity. See, we all not going to be there. But, you know, in that unity. But he's brought all the offices till we all come in the unity of the faith. Because we also, this so that lets you know that there's a continuation of the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists and the pastors and the teachers continuously teaching and preaching the word of God and leading us to the things of God. So until we all, so they, so this is a continuous process with each people. There's always going to be a continuation of the offices being performed until we all come into the unity of the faith. And we know that everybody's not in the unity of the other faith and of the knowledge of the son of God until a perfect man. So we all are not perfect, but the offices is there so that God will use these people until we become a perfect man. So we, and he says unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. So we're going to constantly have the different offices, the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists, the prophet, the, the apostles, and, you know, to constantly teach the word of God and pre present the word of God to you with understanding until we become in the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Because we just, you're not going to be there starting off, you know? So that's why I say this is a, a transformation. It may be a process. Let's look at it on verse 20. It says, but ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. He says that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. So he's telling Ephesians that, you know, you have to put off the former conversation or the former way of life that's what conversation mean not talking about conversation way we use it like words talking no he's talking about conversation meaning the way of life you have to put off this former way of life he says this former conversation the old man or this former way of life from this old man he says which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust the Bible tells us that each man, every man is drawn away when he is tight with his own lust in the book of James. So the old man is caught up in his own lust. So we have to put off. He says that he telling Ephesians, they have to put off the old way of life according to this new that old man. And so do we. He says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So they wasn't already renewed. That's why he tell them to be renewed in the spirit of their mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And the Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see God. So he's telling these Ephesians, yeah, they believers. But he's still telling them what they must do. Because so, that shows you that they not there yet. So, so it's a process to get you somewhere. You may have been this way at point A, but we need to get you to the finish line, to point B. So he tells them that they have to put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Let's look at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, let's look at verse 9 and 10, which says this. Paul says, he says, lie not one to another. Now he's telling believers. He's telling them what to do. He says, lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. So they ought to have put off the old man. So he's telling them, so since you have put off the old man, don't lie to each other. 
He says, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So there's a way that we should be now that we supposed to have put off the old man and put on the new man. So no longer lie to each other. All right. Because that man that lied, that, that part of you, that old man of you, he should have been have put off. He should have died. So now you should do this new thing. All right. You should now, you know, speak the truth to his neighbor. He says, uh, verse 10, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. So that new man is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. And we all may not gain that knowledge overnight. It may take a little process of time to gain more knowledge and seeing what does God require of us. So, you know, uh, it may take a little time. It takes studying. It takes reading. It takes hearing the word of God. And we don't get all the study, hearing and reading all in one night so as we walk in this process of you know we walk in the faith and we constantly learning and learning we learn more and more about what god requires and what god you know want us to do and what he don't want us to do so that's why i say it's a process as we learn um colossians chapter 4 verse 12 says he says epaphras or epaphras he says, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluted you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. So this man, he said, who is a servant of Christ, he's always laboring. He's he fervently, he says, for you in prayer. So I mean, he's praying for you consistently all the time, you know, that you may stand perfect and complete in the will of God. So he's constantly doing these prayers because he wants the people to be perfect and complete. All right. And I'm going to show you one more. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I want to read verses 3 through 5. Philippians 2, 3 through 5. And it says here, he says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So Paul is teaching the, the, the Philippians on how they ought to be. He said it. He's so he's training them. He's teaching them on what God requires. So the point I'm bringing up is that if they was already at that point, there will be no need to constantly teach them or to constantly tell them what to do and what not to do and how they ought to be. So then he ends it. You know, he goes on to say, hey, well, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So take on that mind frame that Jesus had in, in that way. You would, you would be exactly what God needs you to be. So we may not get it overnight. We may get it through time. And by reading, we learn more and more about what God requires of us. By hearing the word and by studying the word, we learn more and more. And we get that over time. And so as we get it, we apply it. You know, whatever we get on Monday, we apply it Monday. Whatever we get Tuesday, we apply it on Tuesday. But see, I didn't get to Tuesday. I didn't I didn't know um what I learned on Tuesday on Monday. So Monday I learned one thing, Tuesday I learned something else, and as I keep learning, then I start applying. Then Wednesday I learned cover member. We all you start off as a babe. Paul talked about how you don't, you know, you get the, the milk, the milk, but then he couldn't give those that was on milk meat. So you can't take on meat when you're still on milk, just like a baby in real life. You don't give a baby, a newborn baby, any meat to eat. You don't get them solid food. You get them milk because they are processing. They are growing. And as they grow, you get more and more. You start off on milk. Or the, the milk of the word, you start off what? On the gospel. Somebody got to teach you the gospel. Hey, God sent his son. He died. He buried and he, he rose again. And so that's the, you get that milk and you say, you know what? I believe that. 
Then after you learn what God did, then you start learning more and more about Christ. You start learning more of the, the deeper things of God or the deeper things of the spirit. But you don't get those deep things when you're still on milk. You still got to learn some basics first. And so you don't go from basic. Even in, It's like that even in school. You start with basic math before you start getting to all the, the, the algebras and the calculus and you know all the advanced math. You got to get some basics before you get the rest. So this whole uh, transforming into Christ, it may be a process. It, it's a process. We don't know everything God wants us to know on day one. But by the time we get to day 10, we, we, we didn't learn more and more. And we start applying everything we learn. But it happens over time. All right. So, hey, everybody repent. Turn to Jesus. I pray that God will help you be strong. Pray God help me be strong and help us to learn more what he requires us or requires of us. And, and let's apply what we learn each and every day. And so repent, turn to Jesus, get baptized in his name. And um, I'll see y'all the next video.